Hello there. Um, as I struggle with these clear blue skies this afternoon, I hate blue skies, I thought I'd do a little video discussing the lies and delusions and possibly any urban myths around landscape photography that may be holding you back in some way. Um, a lot of these things are discussed on the forums, on all sorts of social media. And some of these I think need clearing up because as I say, they could be holding you back in your photography when they don't need to. Right, number one, you need a top end camera with lots of megapixels. Well, if you think that's true, then you need to tell me why, because I don't think it is. And I think most of all, if you think a brand new camera the latest camera is going to make you a better photographer, then that's something you need to get out of your head straight away. Well, I think this is a good example because I use the Olympus uh, Micro Four Third system. This is the EM1, the Mark One, the 16 megapixel, and I came from Canon digital full frame camera and downsized this, and I find this more than adequate. So what you get from a brand new camera, you need to think about very carefully. You've got to think about why you think you need those extra megapixels. The 16 megapixels on here is more than enough for me. I can make large prints with great detail. I've never had any problem with the images from this camera. But more megapixels equals more room to crop. So yes, with all those megapixels, you can do a lot of cropping, but then you want to be thinking about why you're having to do all that cropping in the first place. What's wrong with your original composition? It should be right in camera and therefore you're using the wrong lens or wrong format. And the thing is, what is wrong with the camera you have at the moment? If you're not getting good results with that camera, what do you think a new camera is gonna do for you? But if you're in a position where you can afford a brand new camera, all well and good, but think about why you're actually buying that camera and what it's doing for your photography. Landscape photography is difficult. The thing is, and I think I've mentioned this before, that when you're setting up your camera to take a landscape picture, you're setting up the camera exactly the same, no matter how experienced you are. So you set your camera up on a tripod, you usually have a wide angle lens, unless you're going for a telephoto shot. You use a small aperture for good depth of field, focused a third of the way into the picture. You put a grad over the sky to balance up the contrast, compose and shoot, and that's it. Same thing every time. It's just a different viewpoint each time. So the art of photography is all in the composition, and that's something you can learn in these videos, of course. Your work isn't as good as other photographers. Well, that's of course true if you're a complete beginner, but you can improve, as I say. So what you should be striving for is to make better images each time. Every time you go out, you'll take a better picture each time. You'll learn the process of composition of photography. But the thing is, what I don't quite get is that you'll see other photographers trying to sell you their prints for you to buy to put on your wall. Well, surely with you being the photographer, the aim is for you to put your own prints on the wall. Isn't that a better thing to aim for? If it doesn't work in colour, just convert it to black and white. <sighs> well, now that's definitely the wrong approach. When you shoot black and white, you should be shooting black and white. It should be a thought that goes through your mind as you're taking the picture. You should be composing, you should be seeing the view as black and white, and you can put that in black and white mode on your camera to help you with that process. So just because it hasn't worked in color, doesn't mean it is gonna work in black and white. Don't think that that's gonna save a picture that doesn't work in the first place. So if it doesn't work in color, then it doesn't work in black and white, apart from when you've composed and set up the image in camera when you're out shooting, to convert to black and white. If you visualize how it's gonna look, how this is gonna work in black and white, then it will work that way. Always use foreground. Well, like any rule in photography, well, there are no rules in photography really, but any rules there are need to be broken. And that applies to using foreground, which is the usual process when you're setting up a picture, is to use foreground, mid-ground and background. But a picture can survive, a picture can work by just having mid-ground and background. You'll probably still have foreground in the shot, 
but it doesn't have to be the most obvious piece of foreground. It doesn't have to be that foreground rock or anything like that. A picture can work without that obvious foreground element. It will take a bit more thought to get that composition just right without that obvious foreground, but it will work as an end result. Always feel the frame. Well, there's a photography quote that goes, if you're not filling the frame, you're not close enough, but that doesn't always have to apply. You can have negative space in a picture. You don't have to fill the frame with the subject every time. And by having an empty frame, it will draw the eye down to the main subject, even though it isn't filling the frame. So it's a way we're working with simplicity, and simplicity is a real key element in photography. Never place your subject in the center of the frame. Well, this is a rule that's been brought into photography just to make your pictures that little bit more interesting, but it's always a rule worth breaking for the right subject. The rule of thirds is a cliche. Well, this is the same sort of thing, because if you don't put your subject in the center of the frame, then you'll put the key subjects around the edge of the frame on the rule of thirds. But if you keep doing this time and time again, then all things will get a bit repetitive, a bit samey, seeing the same thing, same placement all the time. So whilst the rule of thirds can be seen as a bit of a cliche, cliches can work sometimes. So do consider placing your main subject around the corners of the frame on the rule of thirds, but of course, break the rules occasionally as well. You don't need filters. You don't need filters these days, not with digital photography. That's the advantage of digital, it keeps the cost down, you can do without these. Well, there's certain filters you can and can't do without. You can't do without an ND filter, you can't slow down the world without a filter, and you can't do without a polarizer. You can't replicate that polarizing effect in Photoshop. Now the ND grad is one you can do digitally. You can either use a grad within Lightroom or Photoshop, or you can take two pictures and merge the two together to give the equivalent of using a grad. So you spend hundreds, if not thousands of pounds on your cameras, your lenses, and other accessories, but you won't spend a few hundred pounds on one of these. It's your choice, I suppose. But I guess I'd rather do my photography out here in the field. It's all right, little graduated filter. I love you. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Ignore the hotspots. Well, this is where I totally disagree. I always visit the main hotspots. I mean, they're hotspots for a reason because they're so photogenic as a subject. But what I do is that I'll take the main view, that view that everybody does, but then I go and find my own version of that location. It may not be as interesting or have as much impact as that original view, but it's me putting my own stamp on the location. And I think that's the important bit, and for you too. Oh, and lastly, going back to my first point, whilst you're checking out the reviews and going on the forums, seeing which is the best of those mirrorless cameras from Nikon, Canon and Fuji and the like, I'm out taking more pictures. <sighs> just waiting for the light now. Oh, don't just hate slow moving cloud. Oh my God, the time I waste. Du, 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 du. Just checking out my Instagram. Oh, if you don't follow me on Instagram, then do go and follow me on Instagram. I put lots of pictures up on there you might like to see. Oh, and the view I'm doing this afternoon, it's uh, this one here. I'll show you whilst the uh, sun's behind the cloud. So this is in the uh, North Yorkshire Moors. That's my main view across there to that hillside. Got those nice trees there, little farm building in the middle. And this is my foreground, which as I was talking about, there was no real foreground here as such. So I'm hoping I get a little bit of afternoon light just before sunset, lighting up these grasses, which will add that feature in the foreground for me. Oh, hopefully a bit more cloud as well. 